Derek will make sure that whoever's sitting here, that their head is not in All right. Amen. And you can read the book of Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. You know, y'all God is awesome. I'm so glad I served. And I am so glad that he's here. My friend. I got to tell you this before we get into the word. And then we get into the word we can just flow. But this morning, uh, the camera's rolling, right? Yes. Because I want the people to know this. Oh, okay. This morning at about 4 o'clock, I was waking out of sleep. And my back was hurt. And I mean, it was hurting bad. I have never had a pain like that in my life. No, the pain. And it wouldn't subside. So after about walking around for 30 minutes and bending over and praying and doing everything, I had to wake my wife up. I said, honey, I said, my back is hurting bad. I said, I don't know what to do. You're gonna have to get up, you know. And so she said, well, you know, get the heating pad. And so I got, she got the heating pad and I laid on it and it subsided. So I was able to go back to sleep. I thought for some time, but uh, when I woke up again, it was hurting really bad. It wasn't going away. And I told her, you know, get up. I said, get up. We got to go to the hospital. Get up. My back is hurting too bad. I, ain't never, I have never been in that much pain in my life. And it would not subside. And I don't know if you ever, would it hurt so bad if you sweat? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And not only that, I had went into the other bathroom because I really didn't want her. I, I could tell, you know, me being her rock, that it wasn't fair too well with her that I was in pain. Yeah. So I went into the other bathroom and it hurt so bad I began to throw up. I, I began to just dry heat because I had it on my stomach. But you know, when you're, when you're hurting so bad, it makes you nauseous. Yes. And I said, you gotta hurry up, you gotta come on, we gotta go to the hospital. So we went to the hospital right there on uh, Cheyenne and uh, Martin Luther King. And I told her, just drop me off. I couldn't even put my seatbelt on. She was saying, put your seatbelt on. I said, just get there. Please get there. This is urgent. So when I went in there, I gave the lady my driver's license. I said, ma'am, I need to go back now because I am hurting bad. And she called him, she said, take him back. So I went back and they gave me, they immediately hit me up to an ID. And uh, she, the doctor came in and, and he said, we gotta do a CAT scan. So we gotta see what's wrong with your back. And uh, he said, you need to use the bathroom, but I couldn't use the bathroom because they wanted a test. You know, I, I can do it. So he said, but we're going to give you something for pain. They gave me Dilaudid. I don't know if you know what that is, but it's, it's synthetic heroin. That's what it is. He said, because that's the only thing we can give you that's going to subside this pain. So we did the CAT scan, and I mean, I was in pain the whole while. It, it subsided a little bit, but then it came back really bad, and uh, the cat scan came back. He said, uh, you got a kidney stone. He said, you got a kidney stone, and we and, and it's not going to go away till you pass. And uh, so I was continuing to try to go use the bathroom. I just couldn't use it, so I was praying the whole while. But the last time I went in the restroom, I was praying, and I said, Lord, I said, you don't need me, you know, for your church to go on. I said, I know that, without a doubt. And I had already talked to Brother Chick and Brother Cooper and Pat and something. And I said, look, just carry it on. You know, uh, Chick was going to say a few words, but Brother Cooper can preach. He was going to bring it. All right. All right. And I said, Lord, so I said, but just all I want you to do is let your will be done. You know, and after that prayer, I left the bathroom and I went back in the room. 
and the pain subsided. I'm telling you the truth. I'm going to bring tears to my eyes. The pain subsided. And the nurse came in. She said, we really need you to use the bathroom. She said, because if you don't use the bathroom, you're going to have to use a catheter. We got to get the sound. So now it looks like you have an infection in your black. So I, I stood up. And I used the bathroom. Amen. Right there. I didn't go to the bathroom. I stood up and I used the bathroom. And I feel that cup up. And when I did that, they realized that the stone must have passed. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> and you may not... It may not mean nothing to you. But boy, I was thanking God because, see, my son had one. It took him four days. My brother-in-law had one. Past husband had one. It took days. It was hospitalized for days. Because regular over the medicine don't help. They said it's like a man having a baby. That's what the doctor said. He said that's the closest thing that it's gonna come to that I explain to you that it's like a, a it's had like a woman having a baby. You see, the pain is so bad. And so when that stone, because what I did was I the lady, the, the doctor came in, she said, she said, you can go on. Hallelujah. Thank you. And I believe the Lord had answered my question. He said, it may come a time when you don't be there. He said, but it ain't this time. Amen. So he just reminded me of the word. He said, anything you ask, yes. believe. Yes. In the name of Jesus, yes. he said, according to my will, he said, it will be done. Oh, yes. Yes. And I called my son back. I said, I passed. He said, what? <laughs> he passed. And I said, I said, I must have passed because they say it won't just stop hurting because it's still in there. He said, so, and I went home. And I got in the bed. It was about 7 o'clock. No, about 10 o'clock at that time. 9, 30, 10 o'clock. I told my wife, I said, like, wake me up at noon. Because I'm going to church. And I know that they were concerned about me. They said, hey, you need to rest. You need to take. No, 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 no. No, I need to come to church. Because good news is for sharing. And if God healed my body right then and there because I asked him, he didn't do it for me to stay at home and get no rest. He did it so I could come out here and be about his business and tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. Amen. So I'm standing here today with a testimony because I had a test this morning that I have never faced before and I never want to face again. I'm going to find out everything you can do to prevent getting this stone. And I suggest you do the same thing. And I'm going to do my best not to develop another one because I can't even describe to you the pain that it produces. Amen. So give God a hand. Give God a big hand. Give, give God. Because God is awesome. My God is awesome. And he has to show me just like he showed you. Amen. He tests me. He wants to get me to a place that he needs me to be. And often, most times, we can't get there without a test. Amen. You can't go to the next level. You can't go to the next grade. You can't do anything until you pass the test where you are. Then you can be elevated. Amen. So I know the Lord did it for a reason. He allowed it for a reason. And he showed me that he got me. He said, I hear you. I see your tears. 
I feel your pain mm -hmm. and I'm going to fix it right now. Amen. Amen. Because they was talking about hospitals. They said, you know, anytime it's this bad, you have to be hospitalized. They said, you can do it here or we can send you to another hospital. But nine times out of ten, you're not leaving today. That's what they say. <laughs> That's what they said. But God said, we're going to take care of this right now. So you can go do what I called you to do. Amen. 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 So with that being said, I'm going to go to the scripture you heard read in your hearing. It's very familiar to all of you, I'm sure. And it's the story of Peter's denial of Jesus. Amen. And I'm going to read uh, the text. But what I want to read is uh, St. Matthew's version. Uh, St. Matthew 26. His version is a little different. And I'm only going to read uh, St. Matthew 26, uh, 71 on down. St. Matthew 26 and 71. And it says, And when he was gone out into the porch, another maid saw him and said unto them that that were there. This fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. And again he denied with an oath. This is the second time. First time he said, I don't know him. The second time, he began to just, I, I, my mama's great, I'm telling you. I don't know this man. And it, I, you, my hand to God, all this kind of stuff. You know how we do. Amen. Yeah, cross my heart, hope to die, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> he, said, he, said, he said, I do not know the man. 73, and after a while came unto him, they that stood by and said to Peter, Surely thou also art one of them, for thy speech uh, bewareth thee. Bewareth thee. At 274, then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediately the cock grew, and Peter remembered the words of Jesus, which he said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and wept bitterly. He went out and wept bitterly. Let us pray. Father, I come in the name of Jesus. First of all, just thanking you. Lord, I'm so glad I thank you when things are going good. And I thank you when things are not going so good. So once again, I pray that you let your spirit invite me, invite your spirit in right now to minister, Lord, to have his way in this place, to touch somebody today, Lord, and give them what they need for the living of these days. I pray that you open their hearts, minds, and ears that they receive your word, Lord, that they'll be edified and you'll be glorified through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 I'd like to use for a thought today, your mistakes are not final. All right. Amen. Your mistakes, your failures, your mess up are not final. They don't define you. They don't define who you are. The reason that is so important is because we've all made mistakes in our past. Amen. Some more than others. Some are suffering more than others because of the bad choices that we made. You might have made some mistakes, but I'm going to tell you right now, the Lord wants me to let you know you made some mistakes, but you're not one. All right. All right. You may have made some mistakes, but you are not a mistake. Because God does not make mistakes. Amen. Amen. He, amen. he said every person he created is fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. I believe that the price for a full life is led by mistakes. What I mean by that, I believe that failures is the price we have to pay if we want to be used by God in the fullness of his will. That's the price we have to pay. If you look in the Bible, you look at Peter, you say, well, Peter really messed up. And he did. 
Because we're reminded how he told the Lord, I'll never. He said, yeah, all these other people, they going to forsake it. They might turn it back. He said, but I want to die. He said, and then he meant that. He meant that. But Jesus told him before the cock called three times. He said, you, you don't deny me. Amen. Amen. So sometimes, many times, like Peter, we feel like we are gone. Amen. The, the devil wants to put us in a state of guilt. Amen. Yes, he wants you to feel like you're no longer worthy. God is done with you. Uh, Satan wants to, to, to maim us. See, God won't let him kill you. He won't let him kill you. Just like when he told Job, you can touch his body, you can kill his family, you can do everything, but don't try to destroy his soul. Yes. See, God decides he's going to live and die. Amen. 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 But, he, but Satan, he allows him to buffet us, if you would call it. He allows him to do things to us yes. that he knows the enemy means is doing it for evil. Yes. He knows he's doing it to destroy you. God knows that. Yes. He knows it. That's why he told Peter when he asked his disciples, he said, who do men say that I am? Yes. Amen. Amen. Uh -huh. That's what he said. And, 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 and it's in uh, St. Luke 22, and I believe. Amen. No, St. Matthew 16 and 13. St. Matthew 16 and 13. Mm -hmm. He asked a question, a very important question that we need to answer today. For ourselves. No one else can answer this question for you. Amen. Yes. And Jesus is asking because it's important the answer that he gets. It says here that when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples, said, Whom do men say that I the Son of Man am? And they said, Some say thou art John the Baptist, some say Elijah. Others, Jeremiah, one of the prophets. He said unto them, But who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. He said, And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon by John, for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you. He said, But my Father which is in heaven, and I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And he said, and, and I will give thee, what? The keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man yes. that he was Jesus, yes. the Christ. Yes. He told Peter before he denied him. He told him that Peter, Satan, has desired to sift you like we. He said. But I pray for thee that thy faith faileth not. And then he said something very important. He said, when thou art converted, strengthen your brother. What he was telling Peter, see, the enemy wanted to sift Peter because he knew Peter was the leader. He knew Peter had the keys to the kingdom. He knew God was going to use Peter to build his church. He knew that God the Father gave Jesus to serve the revelation of who he chose. And he knew Peter didn't know it except the Father told him. So the enemy knows that if he can destroy the head, the body will die. Amen. So when Peter did that, he wept bitterly. And he knew. He felt like some people feel today because it's so important that we don't allow the enemy to put us on the shelf. 
Because you know after that happened, what did they do? Peter said, I'm going fishing. They said, we going to. Why? Because we following you. But we know that Jesus came and visited him again. And he charged Peter again. And he said, do you love me? Peter said, yeah. He said, it feed my sheep. In other words, what are you doing? See, I don't know who I'm talking to today, but somebody is feeling like Peter. You're feeling like you're no longer worthy to serve God. God is done with you. You done messed up too bad. One time too many. And I'm here to tell you, God is not finished with you. God is not finished with you. He still has a job for you to do. So he said, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know I love you, you know all things. He said, and feed my sheep. What he's telling Peter is, what are you doing fishing? He said, I, I never told you that after you, 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 you denied me, that I didn't have job work for you to do anymore. He said, I never fired you. I never decommissioned you. He said, but you let the enemy put you on the ship. He said, but you can't be letting him tell you what to do if I'm your Lord. You see what I'm saying? That's, that's what a lot of people are doing today. They don't feel worthy to serve God because they think they done messed up too bad. Amen. We all have a past. Amen. Amen. So he told Peter to go. I need you to go to work. So we know that Peter did exactly what he said. And who did Jesus use on the day of Pentecost? Peter. Say 3,000 souls. Amen. And who did Jesus come to after his resurrection when, when Mary and the other Mary came and they came to the tomb? She, he told them, he said, look, I want you to go tell my disciples. And then he named Peter by name. Yes. And Simon Peter yes. to come meet me. You, you see what I'm saying? So don't never let the enemy take you out of the equation. Amen. Because God has never turned his back. He promised he'd never leave you nor forsake you. He promised he'd never do it. Amen. So we know that the enemy came to do what? Steal St. John 10 and 10. He came to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, I come that you might have life. And that you might have it more abundantly. Satan wants to steal your joy. Through trials and tribulations, storms that come into your life. He wants you to start having a pity party. He wants you to feel sorry for yourself. He wants you to play as a, a victim. A child of God is not a victim. Because we are a victim or we are victorious. The choice is yours. Jesus said, we are victorious. We are more than conquered through him that loved us. Amen. So if you want to play this, see the Holy Spirit, don't get into pity party. Amen. And you know, he don't do it. So we know that, that Peter felt bad about it, and sometimes we do too. But the truth of us some, is some of us have been falling and failing over and over again in different areas of our life. Ain't that right? Yes. Some fall down more than others. Yes. Some of you feel like you just can't help it. And, and I tell you right now, you can't. Because we can't do it, but the Bible says that I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. God will never define you by the mistakes you have made. Now that's good news. Yeah. That's good news worth sharing right there. Yeah. God will never define you by the bad decisions, the bad choices, the bad, the wrong direction that you go in. He'll never define you by that. The enemy will put a guilt trip on you, and he will define you by that. And if you don't know any better, he'll cause you to put a guilt trip on yourself. Yeah. Well, I'm telling you right now today that you can cancel that guilt trip that you was about to go on. Amen. Amen. Just cancel that. Amen. 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 Because the Bible says a just man falls seven times. Yes. 
but he get back up again. Ain't that right? Because the Lord lifts him up. God will never do that. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you because he knows that we are just dust. Yeah. Amen. He knows our frame. Yeah. So he said what he'll do is, he said, come now and let us reason together. He said, though your sins be as scarlet, I'll make you white as snow. Ain't that right? Amen. But he said we have to reason. When we have to be humble and obedient. I'm here today to speak to somebody. I don't know who needs to hear this message. Amen. But you feeling like Simon Peter today. Amen. You feeling like God has uh, wrote you off. Amen. Some people, if you're not careful, have been told that they can fall from grace. I don't even know what that means. If, if where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. That means sin can't out sin grace. Then how can you ever fall from grace? Amen. That's, that's an impossibility. That's not biblical. Amen. But the devil wants to put a guilt trip on you. He wants to steal your joy. He wants to kill your witness. And he wants to destroy your works. See, he don't want you praising God. This is why every time we get in trouble, every time a storm comes, something happens, what happens? People start to back away. And they start to isolate themselves. Why are you isolating yourself when the battle is spiritual. Yes, yes. And the only way to deal with it is by the Holy Spirit. Lord. But you drawing back, isolate yourself with the devil. Lord. Amen. This is how you're getting people to kill themselves. Because the only voice they listen to is his. Yes, yes. Amen. You, he got you telling yourself you can't live without a spouse. Or you can't live without your mama or daddy. You can't live your child in path and you just can't live. Life ain't worth living no more. Really? Life is always worth living. I don't care what you done lost. Amen. You feel like you done lost. The only person we can't live without, his name is Jesus. Amen. Amen. But we need to understand that it's not God who puts these uh, guilt trips on us. Amen. It's pity party. It's the enemy. Amen. God is not done with you. And I thank God that he has never given up on me. And he will never give up on you. Amen. He hasn't judged you unworthily. He has not uh, not accepted you in the beloved. Amen. He's still on your side. Amen. Peter is the one who led the church in, into even this day. Amen. Even into this day. Now, I hope, are the children, the children are still here, right? Amen. Amen. Okay. So look, there's a story I want to share with you. It's a true story. I mean, you, many of you know who this person is because he's right here in Las Vegas. And his name is Steve Wynn. Everybody knows who Steve Wynn is, right? Amen. I used to work with Steve Wynn. All the properties that the MGM Resorts own right now used to belong to Steve Wynn. Except the ones that they approved near Lake. Uh, and, in, and, and, and what happened with Steve Wynn is in 2001, Steve Wynn brought a painting. He bought a painting, okay, for $50 million. One painting. Amen. The painting is called La Red. Anybody know what the Lorev is on the strip? Well, in French, Lorev means the dream. Yeah. Steve Wynn, his whole life, said, I got to get that painting. Why? Because it meant it had value to him. Yeah. I, I guess so for $50 million. <laughs> I, hope, I hope there was a reason behind it. Amen. But he always wanted that painting because he said when he started out, all he had was a dream. So that painting, he said, one day I'm going to get that painting. I don't care how much it costs. I don't care how much I have to pay for it. And he got it. And, and, and five years later, he sold it. 
Yeah, a man uh, named Cohen, Mr. Cohen, called Steve when he said, that's a one of a kind painting and I want it. He said, would you depart with it? He said, oh man, it would cost so much. He said, because I have such sentimental value for it. And so he said, well, I'll buy it. And he, he said, how much will you pay me? He said, $139 million. So I think he made about 80 some million dollars. So for that kind of money, Steve said, well, when do you want me to send it? <laughs> yeah, dream, I believe after, you know, so that kind of, I, 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 you know, we can keep the dream alive. I, I'll come see it in your hotel, whatever. We, we'll, but, but for 139 million, we can do that. So they agreed, but what Steve Wynn did is he, he, he had a party. He had a party because he wanted everyone to see this painting before he delivered it to Mr. Cohen. Amen, because after that they would have to go somewhere else to view it. So he had a party in one of his big hotels. He invited everybody who was anybody. He wanted them to see it. And you know Steve Wynn had a vision problem. I don't know if uh, you not guys know that, but he had a, a vision. And, and sometimes he would lose his equilibrium. You know what I mean? So what happened is, he had this big party, he had the painting sitting up on an easel. And he went up to speak about the painting and thank everybody for coming and let them know that the reason he's doing it is we'll no longer be here. He says, I want all my friends, all everybody to see it one last time in my property, right? And as it <laughs> would have it, he lost his equilibrium. And as he was falling, he, by instinct, just reached back. And when he reached back, his hand went right through the crack. Now you can imagine what he's thinking right now. So he, so he called Mr. Cole. And he said, look, the dream has been destroyed. He says, oh, he said, I just had an accident. I just destroyed the painting. He says, so I can't, it was already sold. He just hadn't, hadn't delivered it. You understand know what I'm saying? So the painting belonged to Mr. Cohen. <laughs> Thank God. But. But, y'all, but God, listen. So Steve Wynn said, I'm going to buy the pain back from you. He said, for what you paid me for. He said, I'm going to buy the back for $139 million. Mr. Cohen said, you don't, that's crazy, but okay. <laughs> Amen. That don't make sense, but okay. So Steve Wynn brought the painting back, and he began to search for someone who could repair the painting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he found a man, and the man said, look, he said, I can repair the painting. He said, in fact, I can repair the painting so good that no one will ever know that the painting was destroyed. He says, it's gonna take me over a year, but I can do it. So Steve Wynn paid him, he said, okay, I want you to fix the painting. What I'm trying to tell you people of God is maybe you think your dream has been destroyed. Maybe you think it's over because of what you're going through, what you're dealing with, what you're struggling with. You may even think that God didn't turn his back on you. But you couldn't be farther from the truth. What happened is that man fixed that artwork. And when you looked at it, Steve went and put it back up in his building. He didn't flinch. He, he, he was glad he still had it. Because now it meant more to him than it did before he sold it first. 
So when you looked at it, Mr. Cohen came and he, he looked at it. And he said, because now remember, he never saw it when it was destroyed. Now he's looking at it, but it's been repaired. You know what I'm saying? And he said, now I wonder if he just changed his mind. <laughs> you know, told me he destroyed it and didn't give me the pain because he didn't want to. And so he went to Steve Wynn and he said, look, uh, the painting don't look like nothing's wrong with it. You know, the dream. The dream looked like it's still intact. And Steve Wynn <coughs> told him, he said, look, he said in the front, it looked like nothing never happened. He said, but if you turn around and look in the back, you'll see all the patchwork where it was totally destroyed. What I'm telling you is, a lot of times I use me and my wife as an example. You guys, people look at me and my wife and they think, man, that's just a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful marriage. They're doing great. I wish I could be like that. Right? I wish I had what they got. But you don't know the price that we had to pay to have what we had. You understand what I'm saying? You don't know the valleys we had to go through. You don't know the tears. and the, You don't know the brokenness. You don't know everything. The price that it, you have to pay. Like I said, mistakes. It's a price, bad decision. It's a price you have to pay for fulfilled life or fulfilled life in Christ. You have to go through it to get to it. You can't go around the mountain. You have to be able to climb the mountain. The problem is a whole lot of people give up. And if you look at that beautiful portrait of our life that you're looking at the front of, if you turn it around, <laughs> you may say, you know what, I don't want to go through, oh Lord, I don't know, I don't need to deal with that, oh, no. oh not me, oh, I... <laughs> Amen. What you're looking at is the dream. See, you're looking at the finished product that has been repaired like it never was destroyed in the first place. You understand what I'm saying? Do you get what I'm trying to tell you today? Your mistakes are not final. Amen. You're just on a journey. And if you want to be victorious on the journey, you can't give up. Amen. Amen. Because God, like that man that fixed that artwork, that painting, is a Picasso. <laughs> and he can fix anything that's been broken in your life. He is a master, expert at repairing and restoring broken things. He never throws it away. He takes it and he repairs it. He restores it like he would a vintage car to where when he gets done it's worth more than it was when it was new. It gets better with age. So what he did was he kept that painting because it's in French called the dream. It means the dream. And Mr. Cohen could not believe that it was ever destroyed. Amen. And you may say, well, Pastor, how, how do we do it? You have to keep your hand. <coughs> In the Lord's unchanging hand. You have to. You have to be steadfast. And unmovable. You can weather any storm. Because God. Is the one that allows the storm to come. And storms don't come to stay. Storms come to pass. You ain't never heard of a hurricane. Or a tornado. Or nothing else. Just start and never stop. It comes, it goes through, and it leaves. Amen. 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 So every storm that comes into your life, God is able to fix it. Amen. Amen. And, and what I want to tell you today before I leave is this. 
You say, well, Pastor, how do we do it? How do you go on after you messed up so bad? Amen. You do what Peter did. Amen. You stay focused. Jesus is still trying to speak to some of you today. But you don't want to listen. You're listening to the wrong voice. Amen. When you get down, you get depressed, you get discouraged. Don't focus on your problem. The Bible say keep your eyes on Jesus and he'll keep you in perfect peace. He said don't focus, don't, don't, don't look at what your problems say. Look at what the word says. Amen. You can stand on the word of God. You know, Peter, something you got to live. Let me tell you something. The way you do it is God, you got to have Jesus in your life. Mm -hmm. And Jesus will help you live with what you can never live down. You understand what I'm telling you? People won't let you live it down. Because people are going to put you on the guilt trip. See, people are going to put you down. They're going to put you in a box. But don't know people have no heaven or hell for you. Don't know people, can't know people do nothing for you. God is the one that decides your life, what's going to happen in your life, how successful you're going to be. And every time people try to put you down, God is going to lift you up. Amen. And let you know that you belong to him. So uh, it, it may cost you everything in this world. But you must always remember that when Jesus came, he said, my kingdom is not of this world. So if you want so bad to be accepted in this world by these people, wicked and perverse generations, you're doing the wrong thing. You need to be seeking to please God and to be accepted into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Because this world is going to pass away and everything in it. Amen. Man is going to put you down. He's going to count you out. He's going to judge you. Uh, He's going ju- he to declare you unfit. He's going to condemn you. But Jesus is the judge. And I thank God for that. But God, He will never leave us nor forsake us. He's going to keep His hand on your life. Amen. He gonna pick you up and dust you off. Amen. He gonna put you right back in the game. Right back on your charge. Amen. And and, 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 and if you can see the picture of the dream, your dream is never destroyed. As long as you got life in your body. You can pray yes. to the one that creates the dream. Amen. Amen. The maker of dreams. Yes. Amen. Yes. And he will make sure that whatever he's called you to do, whatever he declared for you to be, that you can be there. But what you have to do is you have to get up and you have to go to work. Last week I talked about your works, your walk, and your witness. You got to be a witness for Jesus Christ. You got to ask yourself the question, am I doing my will or am I doing his will? See, when Peter, when they went fishing, he went back to doing his own will. And Jesus came and said, what are you doing? You're not supposed, you're supposed to be denying yourself and taking up your cross and following me. You're supposed to be about my business. Fishing is your business. I told you that I was going to make you a fisher of men. You out here catching bass and crawfish and all that. What is he doing? That don't look like no man to me. And he said, I need you a fisher of men. I need you to save souls. That's our job. You want to glorify God? Save souls. And I'm going to share this with you. I'm going to sit down. We went to the store yesterday, me and my wife. And you know, the spirit leads me. I don't, I don't talk to everybody. But I talk to a lot of people. If you saw me, you'd think I talked to everybody. 
But I'm looking at, I'm, I'm looking on the spirit to get in the car, talk to them, talk. So I'm looking at this family, and I go up and I say, how you doing? Here, I, I want to invite you to church on Pastor McMillan. And you know what? In the store twice, both people that I talked to told me we are looking for a church on. One had just moved out from Louisiana, the other had moved out from California. And they said, well, praise the Lord, that's amazing. We was just talking about this the other day. I said, that's okay, God is real. And so what I'm telling you is when the spirit down in you abide, you're going to show some signs. I can't help it. I, I, and I'm just, and, and, and you may not see them, they may not come now. You, you know, it may be years, it don't matter. What he's saying is good news. It's for sharing. You see what I'm saying? People need to know the God you serve and what he's able to do. I didn't quote no scriptures. I didn't go into no dissertation. We just talked about the God that I serve. They asked questions about the church and what we believe. I told them, you just go on the website or YouTube and you can see. Amen. And I guarantee you, he said, if you cast my bread upon the water, it will not return to me, boy. So a lot of times we want to see the fruit of our labor. Yeah. See, if you don't see them come the next week, you feel like, well, I just once again told them the people rejected, they didn't come. That's not true. Right. Sometimes they may not even come to this church. They may not even see you again. But what you share with them caused them to go somewhere and be saved. Yes. Wherever they went. You understand what I'm saying? So don't feel like it's not worth it. That's our job. You get these cards and you go out and you share. You tell somebody Amen. about the goodness of the Lord. You tell them about Jesus. Amen. Because that's our job. And that's what Peter did. That's what the church is about. Amen. Amen. And remember this as I close. Whatever you can imagine, God can bring it to pass. Amen. Amen. He said in Ephesians 3 and 20, Unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can even ask or think according to the power. He said that work is in us. He said, I already put it down on the inside. Amen. All you have to do is draw. We have power to change the world. Amen. Amen. You have the power. If you're born in the Spirit of God, you got the power to change the world. Amen. All you, I want you to do today is ask yourself, am I making a change? Am I making a difference in anybody's life? Amen. For the glory of Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Amen. And before I end this broadcast, I want to thank everyone who is watching. And I want to give you an opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior and save your soul. All you have to do is say this simple prayer, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner and I've sinned against you. I'm sorry for my sin. Forgive me in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. I believe that Jesus is your only begotten son. I believe he died on the cross for my sins and on the third day he raised him from the dead. Lord, come into my heart. Yeah. And say by your spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you said that simple prayer according to the word of God, you have been born again. Find a Bible teaching church. You can go to the solid rock nondenominationalchurch.org and subscribe. You can support this church and you can support God's <coughs> ministry. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand.